Hello, it's Joe from Dunk Tank Podcast here. Thank you for joining me. What I wanted to talk a little bit about today is sort of a follow-up to our previous episode, which was actually about SpaceX's Falcon Heavy launch, a first-of-its-kind and an experimental reusable rocket. Um, if you haven't heard the episode, I'll link it in the description below. It's, uh, I would like to think, pretty entertaining listening to uh, the three of us get a little... Uh, a little drunk as we uh, get overly excited about sci-fi-esque rocket launches, but it's uh, we cover a lot of interesting topics related to um, scientific progress and in the realm of space flight and space innovation and where exactly all that's going, both in the near term and maybe you know a little more specul speculatively in the future. So uh, check that out if you haven't already. But today, um, again, what I wanted to focus on is an article that I've actually seen circulating around online. Um, and it's an article, as you can see here, it was published in the Guardian. And uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I think it's uh, it's a problem that is uh, more than just what we see here. It sort of goes beyond just this example in terms of um, people making claims without all the right evidence or, or stating opinions without all the proper levels of data that you might otherwise want to make a substantial opinion. I actually teach writing and rhetoric, so I'm, re I'm genuinely really interested in these types of opinions and sort of where they evolve from, or where, they're, where they stem from, maybe, rather. So, you know, just diving right in, we can start with the title and ask what's going on here. So the title says, Why Elon Musk's SpaceX launch is utterly depressing. And again, they're referring to the uh, Falcon Heavy launch, which I'll get into the details of that as I sort of go through uh, what their arguments are against this launch. And uh, right off the start, the title is interesting. I don't know if I agree with it, but I, I certainly don't have a problem with it. Um, it. It, you know, is interesting. It does draw me in. So um, I'm, you know, interested enough to see what this uh, writer has to say, what this opinion actually is. You see in the blurb right below here, it says, silly and fun, uh, it says Elon Musk is right, silly and fun things are important, but some of them are an indefensible waste of resources. That already raises some issues. Um, if you look at the launch or the facts behind the launch, um, this was a test launch, so it had a very specific purpose, which was basically, as Elon Musk himself said, not to blow up on the launch pad, ideally. And as I describe this further, again, you'll see why <laughs> that's... Uh, that's a fair assessment of maybe what would have happened. Of course, the rocket, for, for reference, did launch, and it did more or less do what it was supposed to, but we can get into those claims, as, or we can get into those points of uh, fact as we look at the claims made throughout the rest of this article. So, uh, the first paragraph opens um, with this introduction about how, on Wednesday, two things happened. In Syria, 80 people were killed by government airstrikes. Meanwhile, in Florida, Elon Musk fired a sports car into space. Guess which story had dominated mainstream news sites? That uh, does raise an issue, but I don't. I'm not sure if it's the issue that's really the point here exactly. But okay, uh, let's see where this is going, right? Okay, so the next paragraph gets into uh, the Falcon Heavy, and you know exactly what it does. You know, you can see all that here. It talks about the publicity and how you know this is all about advertising for Tesla. But then it comes back to the issues in Syria, um, refugee crisis, of course. You know, these are all things that are horrible that are going on right now. You know, certainly worth and, and needing more attention, which leads to the main argument of this article, where, where, which you see here. There is perhaps no better way to appreciate the tragedy of 21st century global inequity than by watching a billionaire spend $90 million launching a $100,000 car into the far reaches of the solar system. Okay. Um, that's true unless you look at exactly why he did that. Now, the part about this being a master stroke of advertising uh, for Tesla, yes, that's true. Um, you know, I could see looking at this and saying, yeah, that's kind of a, a crass, maybe offensive um, method of using a vehicle like this, you know, um, a space vehicle like this to launch something so useless into space, but um, again, this doesn't mention, this article doesn't mention the fact that any test vehicle, which this is a test vehicle, this was the first time a rocket like this launched. Whenever a, a test vehicle like this launches, you usually launch a dummy payload, what's called a dummy payload, and 
that means that it's not a, a, a viable payload. It's not delivering actual supplies or people somewhere because, again, there's so many things that could go wrong, like Elon Musk himself said, expecting it to possibly even just blow up right on the launch pad. And, of course, none of this is mentioned. Um, it says in the following paragraph, Musk, Musk said he wanted to participate in the space race because, quote, races are exciting and that while strapping his car to a rocket may be, quote, silly and fun, Silly and fun things are important. Now listen to the conclusion of those quotes, which you'll notice have these three dots, these ellipses um, at a certain point, which omits certain information from the full context of the quote. The author says, Thus, anyone who mentions the colossal waste the project involves or the various social issues to which these resources could be put can be dismayed as a killjoy. So what the author here is, um, is implying is that this is just a crazy billionaire, you know, a.k.a. Tony Stark, who wanted to launch his car into space. And uh, so he did it because he has billions of dollars to do it. Where if you read the actual quote where these sort of mini quotes are taken from, um, you get a much more comprehensive context. And uh, I, if you just indulge me, I can do that for you now. Read the fuller quote here. So what Elon Musk actually said was, and I quote, I think we can really do this a lot and keep advancing the technology to achieve full and rapid reusability, which would have a profound effect on the future. Falcon Heavy has the same level of expendability as Falcon 9. So the price of a Falcon 9 is $60 million. The Falcon Heavy is $90 million, even though it's got three times as much capability, because in both cases the only thing that's expendable is the upper stage. So for some context again, the... Falcon 9 rocket, which is what the Falcon Heavy is made out of. It's basically three of these single rockets called Falcon 9s connected together. And they separate, but they land back down, which is what they did. So they're reusable. No other company or government in the world has ever been able to do this in practice. And, and SpaceX has been doing it. They've been actually launching satellites and then landing these rocket boosters. So it greatly brings down the cost, whereas every other rocket in the world... Um, more or less just kind of burns back up in the atmosphere as it as it comes back down to Earth. So it, it's much more expensive to launch um, a similar amount of material into orbit. Um, the same type of launch to launch the same amount of material as this Falcon Heavy rocket just did would have cost about $300 million. So a $90 million launch is much, much cheaper, and it will only get cheaper from here, as he puts it, as the technology keeps advancing. With that said, um, he goes on to say, again, from the fuller quote here, normally for a new rocket they launch like a block of concrete or something like that. The imagery of it is something that's going to get people excited around the world. So there you go. I mean, that's why he chose the car. Um, it should be noted that, again, that Tesla is a company uh, that Elon Musk also owns uh, or is CEO of in addition to SpaceX. Um, but whereas SpaceX is actually doing a lot and, and has, you know, contracts and, uh, you know, I don't know their exact profit margin right now, but they're, you know, they're making money as far as I can tell. Uh, Tesla is more or less tanking. So Tesla is his electric car company. And uh, he's been criticized for that. But I think you have to keep in mind as well that um, he's taking on an entire auto industry that uh, has like a hundred year head start on him at least and uh, has had you know, little competition outside of its own ranks. And uh, he's trying to change the game. So, of course, that doesn't come easy. But again, all of this is omitted um, in an article like this. Moving on, uh, his line also in regards to uh, races are exciting, the quote here, which just, again, pitches him or pegs him as a crazy billionaire, Tony Stark, who just likes, you know, fast and furious type stuff. What he actually says right before that line is this. It's going to open up a sense of possibility. It's going to encourage other companies and countries to say, hey, if SpaceX, which is a commercial company, can do this, and nobody paid for Falcon Heavy, it was paid with internal funds, then they can do it too. So I think it's going to encourage other countries and companies to raise their sights and say, hey, we can do bigger and better, which is great. We want a new space race. Races are exciting. So when you hear the full context of the quote, it's a little bit different than what this article says, right? 
Um, I think you can see that pretty clearly. You know, if you go on to read the rest of this article, it says, um, but one doesn't have to hate fun to question the justification for pursuing a costly new space race at exactly this moment. If we examine the situation honestly, mm, not sure that's what's happening here, and get past our natural and accurate feelings that rockets are really cool, it becomes hard to defend a project like this. Sure, if your assessment is that this is just a psychotic billionaire who launches his cars into space, but this was a data collecting experiment to make this more feasible in the future when they and they do they have contracts to actually continue launching larger and larger payloads uh, into space for you know agencies like NASA who would otherwise do that for a lot more money uh, but none of this is mentioned here and the following paragraph takes it a step further talking about you know missions to Mars which again Elon is uh, working towards that's a whole other issue which I think is actually a stronger argument maybe against his, his plans for Mars is something maybe we can talk about another time and uh, certainly we'll talk about it in the podcast more but um, he you know this author does mention these issues which again are very relevant reasonable issues that we do need to put more attention towards and more resources towards but I don't think that means stopping or, or putting a pause on science which is what is identified here saying perhaps once violence poverty and disease are solved then we can head for the stars I mean you can talk to any historian you can look at the record of human history putting science on pause does not solve these issues of violence poverty and disease in fact you know you would have to look into the statistics but I'm fairly confident in saying that um, there's a lot that science has done and can continue to do to mitigate these issues to help solve these issues a lot more than proliferate them. You know, technology is often can be used for good or evil depending on whose hands it's in, but that doesn't mean that you should, uh, you know, just abandon it because some people have ill intentions. But that's not uh, what's what's happening here. I think certainly. So you know, th th this this type of article and this type of thinking I think is very dangerous. You know, it does raise you know maybe some interesting points about government subsidies in terms of tax breaks and you know how he's using this money in his in, you know whatever way he wants but again this is to reduce costs of space flights and unless you're willing to give up all communications technology you know telecom innovations um, these are things you want to make cheaper it doesn't quite make sense I, I mean you see even here but Musk is only rich enough to afford these indulgent pet product projects that's an utterly absurd claim. If you want to talk about pet projects, you can look at some of his competitors who haven't actually done what he's done in terms of delivering actual cargo and payload and you know things like satellites, for example, into, uh, into space for actual companies. SpaceX has actually accomplished these goals. So um, this article just totally misses the point. But again, I think it's dangerous because it, it misses the point on the good that can come from this type of technology and I think the good that is coming from this type of technology um, you never know where technological innovation leads that's kind of the point of it again you know there's other arguments to be had for being maybe uh, wary of commercial space endeavors and I think that's a that's a topic that's gonna gain a lot more momentum and a lot more interest in the coming years and and it should we need to keep uh, checks on who's doing what exactly but to just shut down what he's doing like this, to, to peg it as, you know, an, an utter sort of a waste of, a, of resources for the sake of just having a good time, having fun, that's not what he's doing here. I mean, they, they actually, th this Falcon Heavy rocket, they did land two of the boosters, but the main center core engine uh, did crash land. It, it did not land um, as hoped. So, if, again, it's still an experimental rocket in many regards which again is why they used a dummy payload in, in the sense of the tesla vehicle um so yeah that's all i wanted to say uh really about this you know just point out how it's not always as simple to just look at an issue and say I, there's problems in the world this looks like it's connected to that problem and i'm going to do what i can to frame it in a way that negates any other good that may come from it. You know, I, I actually, in thinking about this, I found a very interesting article that I had seen previously, a couple years ago, actually, about how um, global warming, man-made 
global warming, of course, was certainly a factor in fueling the Syrian civil war. Now, obviously, it's much more complicated than that. Um, there's always uh, social, political issues that, you know, work together with whatever other sources of, of push there are towards, you know, horrible conflicts like these. But I'll link this article below as well, because th there's certainly a, a, a connection there as well um, between changing climate and, and lack of resources and how that shifts people, how that shifts populations. And then if it's already at the teetering point to begin with, that's often enough to push it over the edge into what we see you know, in a, uh, with a situation like Syria. And again, Elon Musk is a guy who's trying to revolutionize the auto industry with Tesla, right? Um, he's trying to make electric car kind of the staple, which, uh, again, right now, as it exists, it is expensive, uh, Tesla vehicles, and it's not the perfect solution, but it's a step in what is hopefully the right direction. So to just peg him as part of the problem as a billionaire who wastes, you know, money frivolously when you have plenty of other billionaires wasting a lot more money on, on, on stuff that doesn't benefit anyone. I mean, people spend tens of millions of dollars on houses or, you know, whatever else. I, I think that's very disingenuous, and I think it's counterproductive to getting to a place where we want to be in terms of reusability and sustainability and uh, a better tomorrow. So um, I'd be very interested to know what you, you all think. Um, I hope I explained this. Well, I'm not sure that I did, but please comment in below if I got anything wrong or uh, if you just want to share your thoughts. I'm happy to discuss those as well. And uh, please check out the podcast episode. It gets into this uh, in a lot more depth, so I'll link that in the, the description with everything else. So thank you very much for listening, and uh, I hope to talk to you again soon.